Yeah? Hello. Okay. Hi. Uh, buenas tardes. Um, good afternoon. So we are going to speak English. Um, I'm not a native English speaker, so excuse for any mistake, but I'm going to try. So my name is Fabiana Batistella. I'm the director of Sim São Paulo, which is Semana Internacional de Música de São Paulo, or São Paulo International Music Week. And we, uh, we, we have just um, did the 10th edition in January. And next year, we are going to the 11th edition, uh, which, is going to be, which is going to be in May 2024. Um, but we are going to uh, confirm that soon in our web uh, site and social medias. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you, Primavera Pro, for this invitation. Um, and I'm very happy to be here with my friends here. I'm going to introduce them uh, shortly, and then they are going to speak more about themselves. OK? So uh, the topic of this panel is Think Big, the Road to Internationalization. I have some problems to say this word is very difficult. But um, we're going to talk about that with Elliot Lefko. Yes. Yes. So he's a veteran promoter with 40 years of experience, who is currently vice president of ANG, Golden Voice Concerts in Los, Los Angeles, yes. but he lives in Canada yes. right now, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So then we have uh, Ruby Jean McCabe, right, from Australia. Uh, she's a co-director co of management and events at Sumroom. She works alongside Don Miller to lead programming for Big Sound, which is big festival and conference in Australia, and Gum Up Late. Then you tell us what it is, because I, I, I never heard of, but <laughs> it sounds good. Guilty. <laughs> okay. She also represents some emerging artists from Australia. And my long-time <laughs> friend, Diana Glusberg from Argentina. Uh, and I loved how Primavera Pro described her in the <laughs> website, like the queen of the party <laughs> at Niceto Club in Buenos Aires. <laughs> the most epic concert venue uh, in the city of Buenos Aires. Uh, for the last 25 years, she has been uh, its artistic director, bringing the best of the national and international music scene to its stage. And she also works with Argentinian, Argentinian bands. I did many concerts in Niceto, and it was also a great experience. So uh, I'm going to start talking about my country, Brazil, and uh, try to give you some, <clears throat> some of my opinion and suggestions about how to go abroad, uh, how to uh, enter new territories and markets. So <clears throat> for me, the most important thing to do is to know where you are going to, because every country is different from the other. If you are huge in a country, it doesn't mean you're going to be huge in another country, because markets are different. Uh, it depends on the region, the continent, the, um, the country, and the social, political, economic, and cultural um, things about this country. So I think for me, the most important thing about going abroad is to know the territory you want to go. Um, for instance, Brazil is a big country. It's like a continent. It's very difficult to travel uh, to the south of Brazil, to the, um, from the south of Brazil to the north, 
term of Brazil. Uh, it's easier to travel here in Europe to other countries than to travel inside Brazil because we have many countries inside one country. Uh, every region or state has its own accent, its own uh, market for music, its own um, native culture, food, religion, and um, it's very different one place for, to another. So if you say I want to go uh, with my band, with my project to Brazil, it doesn't mean anything because Brazil is a lot of things. So you need to know where to go, where you can fit in Brazil, where your project can fit in Brazil, which region, which place, which city, and which scene, especially, which kind of market in Brazil you go. So, um, for me, we have like five paths, uh, five steps you need to follow to go into the Brazilian market. The first one is connections and get the right networking in the country. So if you know the right people in the country for your kind of music, your kind of project, it's easier to get inside this new territory. Um, second one is, uh, although we have the chance to distribute your music digitally uh, to all the territories in the world with only one partner, like your partner here in Spain or anywhere, can put your music digitally everywhere. But I think it's important, if you want to go to a territory, to work with a local distribution, distributor, or a local label and a local PR who knows the local scene and the market and can put you and pitch your project to the right platforms and help you to get the right audience digitally. OK? Um, for Brazil, you need to go online. Brazil is a very digital country. Uh, so people are online. It's not, um, people also ask me why Bolsonaro was elected, that terrible president. It's because the internet, because the fake news, and because uh, people are online in Brazil. Okay, so you need to have the social medias and digital marketing for the audience in Brazil. You need to work on that and start your fan base digitally first. So then after all of these three steps, you can think about going uh, to Brazil to do showcases or a tour or a festival Start with small festivals, small venues, or conferences, showcases, uh, market, festivals. Um, don't try to start, of course, with Lollapalooza or Rock in Rio. It's not going to happen. And it's not going to mean anything for you. It's not going to work. So you need to start slowly and small. In, in Brazil, in this new territory. So try to go to the conferences. We have many in Brazil. The biggest one, of course, is in Sao Paulo, the one I, I uh, direct, I do. And it's the biggest one in Latin America. Uh, so it's a good opportunity to know all the market, uh, professionals, companies, and everything in Brazil. And finally, um, uh, I think you, you have to do the follow-up after all of that. But one very important thing you need uh, to have in mind is, uh, before going internationally, you need to have a solid and strong uh, career 
in your own city, in your own country or region. Because uh, if you are not established in your city, in your country, it's more difficult to go internationally. Curators and directors and programmers, they are looking for bands who um, are doing well in their own uh, cities, in their own region. Okay, so curators, they look for bands. And if you have some uh, solid, um, um, solid career in your city, it's a big argument for you to go abroad, for you to get concerts and um, for you to enter new territories, okay? And also, it means you are ready to go abroad also. You have experience, you have stage experience, you have uh, industry experience, and then you can try another market, okay? Uh, also, if you are established in your own city, it means you have a team, a local team, and then you have some money, then you can uh, hire a local team in another country. Because it's very important to have people in these territories to uh, help you to work in new markets the markets that they know and you don't know. So you have to team up with people that can help you to get this audience, okay? So this is my opinion about Brazil. Then I want to hear about your opinion about your countries. I'm going to start with Elliot here. So Elliot, um, please tell us a little bit more about yourself, your career, and um, as you are 40 years old in this industry, what are the, the, the main differences you see like uh, between the dates, among the, the decades? Uh, what have changed to, um, in, in this process of internationalization? Oh, thank you. Um, first, I want to say that um, when you talked about the um, the president of, of, of your country and, uh, <laughs> and the social media. It seems to be, unfortunately, like a, a bad virus going around the world. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think that, um, obviously, in the US, uh, there's so much um, you had turmoil with different um, people. <laughs> yeah. And even in Canada, there's a currently um, a conservative uh, person who's trying to gain control. And you're right. It's like they just people, they seem to um, experts on social media. And it's almost like, if you could channel some of that bad energy into good energy uh, and for, for what you're talking about in terms of breaking bands, it would be a good thing. So I think we should all try to like maybe uh, uh, you know, get rid of this uh, conservative bad energy and turn it into positive, uh, getting bands to be able to tour around the world in an easier way. Uh, and it's very, it's very difficult for bands to uh, go from one country to another country. Um, even in um, Canada, going into the United States, it's almost like sometimes there's a wall going there. And um, an invisible wall, though, and it's similar in, in, yeah, in many different in countries. Yeah, I know that um, there was this band uh, from Canada called the Tragically Hip, and they were like just the biggest band in Canada, and they could never really go into United States and uh, have success uh, for some reason. And it was just like trying to uh, get radio airplay or whatever it was. It's very difficult. Um, when I uh, I've been doing this for a long time, and um, when I first started. Uh, we were talking about bands like uh, Mud Honey or the Pixies or uh, Soundgarden, um, all these different groups. I would promote them uh, when I was on my own. And I was just like, uh, got out of university and I, I, I knew that I was gonna be involved with music my whole life. And I would just, just love music so much. So I would have um, no money, but I would find uh, $100 and uh, bring in a band and after the show was over, they'd go, okay, where are we sleeping tonight? And um, they, would, they would stay at my house and they would make sure that I would sleep, uh, find a room for yourself somewhere because we're taking over your apartment. And in the morning, uh, they would take and eat my cereal and, uh, and all of that. And 
Uh, Henry Rollins would sleep on the floor. So it was very positive energy, trying to do stuff like that. And then as I got older, I, um, I moved to Los Angeles uh, about uh, 22 years ago and started working for Golden Voice, who do Coachella. And uh, I was promoting shows there, like uh, stuff like um, Weezer and uh, System of a Down and arenas in, in Los Angeles and having a good time. And then currently now I'm doing a lot of uh, touring uh, with bands like uh, Nick Cave and Sigur Ross and trying to uh, take them into uh, different parts of America. But um, I, I find that um, I'm bands uh, from around the world trying to come into the United States now and tour. Even like you look at Blur, who played last night and did a wonderful concert. They're so not as popular in North America as they are in Europe, as they are here. And uh, I don't even know if they'll even go to the uh, United States and play uh, with this new record and with this tour, just because there is um, such a big gulf and uh, difference in different social uh, ideas and popularity. Um, so it's, uh, it's funny how uh, it's, it, like you're talking about, it's like there are many different islands around the world and it's very difficult to uh, cross uh, from one island to another island. Yes, exactly. And yeah, did you go with Nick Cave to Brazil? No, so no. I, I tour with him only in um, North America. Okay. Yeah, but I know it's like he's, um, he's one of the few people who are able to tour around the world and have success everywhere. Yeah. And I just think he's just, uh, he's such an open person that he's able to communicate with people and he touches people yeah. everywhere. Yeah, one of my favorite artists. The, the concert was amazing. Anyway, Ruby. Um, Ruby, uh, the same questions. Uh, no, 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 Ruby. Uh, I want to know the. Uh, we want to know the big challenge about Australian bands to go abroad, like because we have this um, image of Australia like another planet, like very far away from everywhere. It's not true, but it, it is for for Latin America. Mm. And we work in São Paulo with a lot of uh, Australian bands with uh, Sounds Australia export office. So please tell us about your challenge to to to, to have Australian bands outside outside the country. Yeah, I mean, uh, like you said, distance is such a <laughs> huge barrier. Uh, uh, the 24-hour flight here <laughs> was <laughs> rough. Yeah, um, but worth it. Barcelona is incredible. Uh, I guess a huge barrier would be money. Um, it's even at, in the current climate, it's even hard to tour Australia um, successfully and be able to have uh, the funds to do that. I, I'm an artist manager as well, and um, we're currently working on a few just national Australian tours, and it, it's it's tough and there's so many Australian artists that are cancelling to us in our own country um, just because we don't they don't have the money for it so um, it's it's one of those things I think it's the distance and the money and um, you really have to be specific as you said uh, where what territory you want to target it's, it's it's not going to just you just can't hop across the pond um, or even just <laughs> drive, I guess, to the next country like you can here in Europe. It's, it's, um, it's tough. So th those things are huge challenges, um, as well as uh, being able to kind of, I guess, cut through a lot of... Uh, there's so many bands and artists kind of being able to travel and being able to go to different markets. And so with, within the challenges that I've just kind of explained, there's it, it, the cutting through amongst the noise, I guess, is also one of those um, big issues. But uh, as you said, Sounds Australia, we have a lot of support from our export office and we're very lucky in the fact that they are always working with international showcasing festivals and, um, and, and are really on, on the front foot of being able to get Australian artists overseas. Um, I just went recently with one of my artists to South Bay Southwest in Texas, and um, yeah, it's a whole other world. <laughs> it's just very different, mm -hmm. um, even within uh, cultural differences. Um, just it's it's wild. We're we're so far away, and you can tell. Um, it's it's not 
it's um it's it's very the disparity is very evident um, even when it comes to you know just how we are as a culture in Australia mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah and talking about that about sounds Australia uh, I, I want to ask you too about the importance of government programs to help uh, export bans or the, the export office like Canada has a lot of programs we have sound Australia and mm -hmm. other programs in Australia unfortunately Latin America <laughs> is like ugh, a nightmare but there is an export office in Brazil called BMA Brazil music and arts I am one of uh, the director of it but it was like um, paused because of the Bolsonaro government and now with the new government, Lula government, it's, it's starting again. So it's a new direction and hopefully we are going to do great things for the next year. So what do you think about government support in export mm. bans? It's integral. Um, a lot uh, working with Big Sound, uh, we get a lot of government support as well in order to bring buyers and um, industry from across the world in order to therefore make outcomes for our artists as well. So mm -hmm. it's uh, without it, Big Sound wouldn't be able to operate. Um, Sounds Australia wouldn't be able to op operate. So yeah, but we're very fortunate in that respect. There's always more that the government could do. Um, Australia is very ruled by sport. Um, a lot of money goes to towards Absolutely. sporting things and, and music and entertainment is sometimes put to on the back foot but um, uh, I guess uh, the government also doesn't understand <laughs> if we didn't have music or um, uh, music related things then half of the economy would just be gone um, but it's interesting because a lot of the time the Australian government just doesn't recognize that fully um, especially post COVID it's been yeah it's been tricky and but it, we're lucky we have a lot of people kind of um, championing um, championing music and championing arts in order to make sure that it still is, thrives as much as it can good we know that US that there is no such thing as a program for export but Canada has a lot right yeah, not a, not a very good uh, football team. I think they, <laughs> they scored one goal at the World Cup, and they, they, Canada had, hadn't been in the World Cup in uh, like 30 years. Um, and uh, they call it soccer, so it's, it's different. Um, I think that, um, they, they, fortunately, uh, there's a history of, uh, of the Canadian government supporting the arts, and, uh, and hopefully it doesn't go away, as, as, we, as we talked about with um, with evil people coming in and trying to run the government. And, um, but um, I think that, um, I know that in um, Quebec has its own culture and there's, it's very vivid as far as um, supporting the arts and um, they've gone to different parts of the world, like as, as you've talked about and the Quebec yeah. artists that you know. Yeah. And, um, and then some of the other bands that like you mentioned, this band, Snotty uh, Res Kids. Snotty, Snotty Nose Res yeah, Kids. Yeah, like yeah. such a great band yeah. and like having, um, an indigenous uh, presence, and there was another band called A Tribe Called Red, and um, they just changed their name to Hallucination, and um, they come out in a full um, regalia, and they're an electronic band, but just like, um, just flying their flag in a really positive manner, and it's great that the government supports that with um, uh, recording and, and touring, so uh, that's a very uh, positive thing, and hopefully that continues. Good. Gianna. Uh, talk uh, a little bit more, a little bit more about yourself, and um, how is it to go to Argentina, and how is it to get Argentinian bands to go abroad? Okay. Uh, first of all, sorry for my English; it's awful, but I try. Um, I'm an artistic director of Niceto. Niceto Club is a venue, iconic venue in Buenos Aires because of our parties, but because we have uh, concerts, big concerts, and we take risks. We work a lot, uh, opening doors to new scenes. We focus in, on that, on 
open to new scenes of uh, different parts of the world. Uh, we work with uh, African artists, French artists, Colombian artists, a lot with Brazilian artists, Canadian, Australian artists. We, um, uh, thousands of artists have performed at Niceto and we assist to our local artists and international artists uh, with the day production in the largest venue as Luna Park, Obras, uh, the Teatro Coliseo, uh, different venues. And uh, also to touring uh, to, uh, for South America. Um, South America is, is a big scene, different countries, and I agree with you with your topics. Uh, you need a strong career. Uh, you have a, you need to have audience in your country to go abroad, and uh, uh, you need uh, open mind, open eyes, open heart. You have to look into the region do you want to go, and uh, make connections. Networking is the key connection with the artists, with the promoters of the, the area, do you want to go? Um, it's important for that, the assist to the market, festivals. Uh, it's, uh, it's amazing uh, when you m meet people miles away, but who has the, the same vibe you know, that you. Uh, love music as you do. Uh, the same tribe in different countries. And uh, other creators, other programmers give you some recommendations. Oh, look at that artist. Uh, I program this uh, kind of music, this new scene in that part of the world. Look at that. And then your mind is open, no? Uh, open heart, because uh, I love music. I, I really believe that music has the power to desanesthetize us, to desalienate people, and uh, you can, the crossover between artists is uh, one of the most beautiful things that you, you can see. Uh, for Argent Argentina music, uh, Argentina is dif it's difficult to go to Argentina because uh, the audience is the, one of the best audience. You saw that with the uh, fans of the uh, uh, Mundial of Football because the same kind of audience you have for the music. Uh, the music audience is uh, well informed, is uh, passionate, is. Uh, but you have to in, in, invest a lot to go to South America because the, air, the, the cost of the airfare, the, the, you don't go to get money to South America. You go to invest, to open market, to um, know the richest music that we have. and. It's, an, it's a construction, step by step. You need time and be patient. But if you have that, you, it's really, really amazing uh, part of the world to go. It's the best experience, I, I would say. Oh, I think. <laughs> yes, um, just um, adding something. Uh, I think it, it's like, it's about knowing the reality, the economic and social reality of each country. Like for instance, uh, it's a long way to go to Latin America. You're not going to get uh, fees. I, I think you're, you're not going to get big fees for the first time you go anywhere, but in, in Latin America it's, it's difficult to, to get money, especially for, um, for bands from countries uh, where the money is, uh, how can I say, more value than mm -hmm. the money in Latin America. For, for instance, euro for us, 
Nowadays, it's very expensive, very expensive to come here. But if you go to South America, you can, uh, you're not going to spend almost anything to hotels and mm. meals, things like that. It's only the, the flight, I think it's yeah. expensive. But the rest is it's cheap, but it's not able for us to compete uh, with other countries, yeah. other kind of currencies, uh, in terms of fees. Yes, I think. Uh, another thing is it's not a one way. You have to, uh, to go to different countries. It's not uh, possible to go to one country because it's the, the cost of the, yeah. of the budget. You have to go to uh, Argentina and Chile, Uruguay, Colombia. Brazil is another thing, <laughs> <laughs> continent, another but yeah. uh, you have to share the cost. Yeah, then yeah. it's uh, to support your your tour. And it was very interesting the thing you you said comparing the fan base with football supporters <laughs> because it's like that in Argentina. You have the audience like. Uh, um, like uh, an audience for football, they have <laughs> flags and T-shirts yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Crowd. They are, and, uh, yeah, passionate like that. Yeah, it's like yeah. crazy and well informed. And it, and especially with rock music, right? Yeah, and curiosity. What music is the biggest oh, genre the, yeah, in Argentina? Oh, electronic music, all, all of kind them. of music, African music. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it's part of the history of the country because, please correct me if I'm wrong, but um, during the uh, dicta dictatorship per period in Argentina and in Brazil, music was like a very strong tool to fight the, um, the government, the dictator. And that's why artists were killed were put in jail or exil ex exiled exil yeah. in other countries. So for Argentina, rock and roll scene was the main genre that uh, fight this dictator government. And in Brazil was Tropicalia and Brazilian music mm -hmm. that was fighting. So we had some artists like disappearing or be killed or be exiled in other countries. For instance, Caetano Veloso and Gilberto Gil, which is worldwide uh, known, they lived in London for a long time because they couldn't go to Brazil because they could be killed uh, because they were fighting the government. So I think historically, rock and roll in Argentina is strong. It, it's especially because of that, maybe. Yeah, but now it's, it's incredible, but it's, it's the best moment of uh, music, uh, Argentinian music abroad, especially here in Spain and in South America, the urban music trap mm -hmm. becomes super great, super huge. N never the Argentinian rock music has the success that uh, trap music. Oh, good. Yeah. Now That's all right. the festival in Spain uh, has an Argentinian trap music. Great. And great. then the trap scene helps the rock scene, the pop scene to mm -hmm. highlight, to, yeah. Okay. Elliot, is, um, do you think it's um, any way from international bands that don't speak English to get into America, into USA? Is that possible? Um, I th obviously, it's 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 a big um, a problem. Uh, but I think that when you look at for, at Coachella, for example, and I've been going to Coachella for about twenty years in in a row. And at first, it was more like just the Red Hot Chili Peppers and the usual kind of bands mm. playing. And then now, you look at the headliners, and uh, it's it's Black Pink, and um, it's um, groups from. Uh, Different, uh, different parts of the world, and it's really changing. And I think that um, many of the headliners now are, um, don't speak English, and um, it's not really a problem. Mm. I think what, what is good is that the show, the performance translates, 
and, it, and it's larger than life in terms of many of the performers. And um, I think what's good too is that I always, when people criticize the lineup and how many women are on the show or um, how many different cultures are on the mm -hmm. show, where it's changing because now mm -hmm. the Paul, the person who programs Coachella, he has the whole world to choose from. So he's, there was, a, there was a YouTube series when he was traveling around the world to see the different cultures and then speaking Amazing. with the performers and then bringing them back. And um, when, when he met Blackpink, he was talking to them and saying, um, oh, um, I do Coachella. And they said, oh, we, we have Coachella clothing that we get from H&M. And, um, and we, we always like love it. And he said, you should come. And they go, oh, we want to come. And he was trying to say to them, you should perform. And they just thought, oh, we'll just come and watch the show. Mm -hmm. But they performed the, a few years ago, and it was a really big success. And when people were looking at the poster when it got announced, the biggest performer was Blackpink, even though many people would say, who, who are they? There was enough people knew about them, and then now they're the headliner. And same thing with um, many of the other performers, but it's, um, it's definitely changing. And it's, it's just like, I think the world has, has opened up so much more now. And um, in many, it's not just at Coachella, but it's at the, um, at the theaters and at the arenas that many mm. of the artists are coming from around the world and doing really well. So I think things are changing and it doesn't, it doesn't have to be um, a language problem. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more of like a, it's many of the things that you talked about is really just building a story where you live and, and making um, a lot of noise. And then if the noise is big enough that people will come and, and find you and, and bring you to, to the country. But it's, um, it's, it's amazing when you get to see uh, different cultures performing on stage. Like last night, there was um, an artist performing from Africa and um, just seeing it here. And um, the audience was going crazy. And it didn't really matter if you um, know what he's talking about. It's mm -hmm. just like, because you can feel the energy yeah. as you're talking yeah. about inside of you as, as, as you're performing. And, uh, and with the trap music, it's just um, there. Um, it's, it's, I don't think it's about a language, really. It's just it's something more than mm -hmm. that. So I think it's positive. I don't know how it translates on the small level when you're first starting out. It's always very difficult to, uh, to build a story when you're first starting out. But um, I do think that the door is, it could be open eventually, which is a positive thing. Sure. Mm -hmm. And for everyone, do you think um, it changed uh, because of the pandemic, after the pandemic um, period, like I heard a lot of um, executives from major labels saying that now they can hire bands from anywhere because we uh, like accelerated the way we go digitally, we go virtually because of the pandemic. So what do you think about that? What happened after the pandemic? Yeah, it, the barriers to um, in, international, is this, however you say that word, <laughs> <laughs> um, have, have definitely been broken down. I mean, even in a small level of uh, maybe at your workplace, you would have to come in and see each other to meet and but or work at your actual desk in an office and now so many people are working from home so it, it's it, it's kind of like that but in um in a musical sense um it, yeah it's it's amazing it's it's incredible to be able to export digitally in a more successful way i think people have been um, maybe people that have been working in the industry for a long time have kind of been able to change their mindset a little bit and, um, and look at uh, exporting and importing music in a different way, which could just be digitally. It could just be, um, you know, making someone big without having to have the person, the people there in the actual location. Um, I think although it, it's kind of a, on the flip side, I know in Australia, um, because we couldn't have any international artists come through, it was a great chance for, for our own artists to be able to kind of be propelled a little bit more and, um, mm. and maybe given opportunities that might not have 
been available to them if, if an international artist that was way bigger come through. Um, for example, our radio station, um, it's, we kind of have one radio station, I guess, in Australia that rules it all, mm -hmm. which is kind of annoying. Um, but uh, there has been so many opportunities through that that um, artists were able to kind of experience um, over the pandemic that they wouldn't have had the opportunity to do so if, if we didn't have borders locked. Um, but now it's kind of going back to, back to kind of what it was before, I guess, with live stuff. But I, th I think it's really opened people's minds and to be able to do more things and do it in a different way, um, which is really cool. Like, mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah, and adding something about that too, uh, new territories. I saw <clears throat> the last, um, the newest report from IFPI, um, and it, it's amazing the numbers of uh, growth in territories that we don't expect. Like when you think about about going abroad, you always think about U.S., Canada, or Europe. It's the first thought. But uh, this report shows that the music industry is growing, growing very fast in Latin America, Africa, and Asia. So there are new territories to be explored. Um, explored. And um, so of course, they, they are uh, very different one for another. When we talk about Africa, we have many countries inside Africa, and this number, this big number of uh, growth is most because of uh, South Africa. Uh, it's more than 26% of growth in one year, and uh, Latin America is 25%, something like that, so it's, it's huge. It, it means that there are a lot of new possibilities and some opportunities in these new territories that Usually, we don't look uh, for them. So I think we should uh, maybe now, after the pandemic, um, think globally. Every country is a possibility. So uh, let's, uh, what do you think about that, especially in Latin America? Well, in Argentina, the, the scene is growing, growing, and we are in a very, very bad economic crisis, but the, the people buy tickets, the, the venues are full, the stadiums, fill the, the mm -hmm. band fill stadiums, the arenas. The, um, the people want to go meet uh, other people, listen to music, see new shows, and... Uh, it's really incredible because of a crisis, but it's happened. Good. Okay, and I have a, a, a last question for all of you to discuss, which is very polemic, <laughs> I think, uh, which is um, the difference between have big numbers in the internet like in the streaming platforms or Instagram and things like that, and selling tickets <laughs> for Rio and concerts in other countries. Because I see a lot of international bands uh, telling me, oh, we are, Brazil is our second country in Instagram or Spotify, things like that. But it doesn't mean uh, um, that they are going to sell tickets because internet is free, but h how does it work <laughs> for you? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll pop in. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I totally agree. The, the um, playlisting and, um, and, and listens uh, do, do not translate necessarily to popularity in that in that territory. Um, specifically, if it's just passive listening, you know, you, a band could be added to like you know, um, a chill playlist that gets played across 
you know, multiple massage therapists or, like, hairdressers or anything like that. And they yeah. could be, you know, popping off in a, in a certain territory. And um, we get a lot of people within Big Sound um, applying and kind of outlining their plays in certain areas or how... And, and it, just, it just doesn't... It doesn't matter. Um, specifically within Australia, um, live is such an integral part of making money. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty much the only way you can make good money aside from selling your merch. Um, so, yeah, when we get those stats come through, it's just... It's kind of just like, oh, that's nice, but um, <laughs> where have you been touring? What shows have you been doing? How many, how big are the rooms you've been selling out? That kind of thing. So um, it, it's hard too because a lot of our artists kind of come to me and, and say, oh, well, look, oh, we're really big in like Los Angeles. <laughs> look at this stat. And I'm like, that's good for you, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, 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 a bit, it's a misguided strategy to be looking at your plays and um, then therefore thinking that it will translate into actual fans that will go to your show. Mm -hmm. Elliot? Um, I, I think it's important to, uh, to build the story and to use social media and to try to um, uh, uh, get fans, but like you said, it's important also to, uh, to find some, some real meaning. Um, and. Um, I guess um, I also want to say that um, in terms of everybody trying to uh, achieve success in another country that um, it, it's, um, there's a lot of failure um, and personally in, in ideas that I try to go after, there's a lot of rejection and it takes a lot of times that you have to keep trying and maybe trying uh, different ways. And I was trying to um, work with an artist uh, this year and I was trying, trying and uh, having some really good meetings. And then at one point, um, the manager called me and said, we can't work with you because of uh, some politics in your own company. And it's, so it was um, now I'm trying to figure out a different way of trying to, uh, to achieve success. But my point is that um, there's um, many times people put um, roadblocks in front of you. And I think you just have to try to be uh, creative in terms of uh, finding ways. Um, one, one story I wanted to mention, too, was um, the group um, Kraftwerk, the German group. <laughs> so um, I always loved Kraftwerk my whole life. And uh, mm -hmm. one time I had an opportunity to work with them. And I had um, a guy do a poster for them. And it was, um, the show was in, the Kraftwerk show was in 3D. So everybody wore glasses at the show. It was like really, really great. Yeah. And then this guy made a poster, a 3D poster. So it was um, like an accordion. And um, if you moved it one way, it was blue, and if you moved it another way, it was red. And it was just like this, this best poster. So I took the poster to the concert, and I gave it to the manager. And, uh, and he said, wow, that's such a good poster. Let me give it to the group. And I showed it to them. And uh, they were like, oh, this is so good. And I, I said, you should be touring in other parts of the world. Like, you just come to North America, and you play two concerts. But there's people who like Kraftwerk all over in many different cities, and you should play there. And they went, yeah, like, totally. We should totally play there. And um, they, um, and I said, well, I can bring you to these different places. And it turned out that we did it. And they even went to to Nashville, like where country music is. And so it's so strange, like, Kraftwerk, the machines, the robots yeah. <laughs> in, in Nashville, Hank Williams, and country music. But yeah. the show sold down. It did really well. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's just sometimes. Um, you use um, whatever tools you can mm -hmm. to uh, achieve success. And sometimes it's just uh, inspiration, as you were talking about, in terms of uh, trying to find some different ideas for your, your toolkit in trying to um, achieve success, that you have to have um, many different tools and many different uh, arrows to shoot at people, to, uh, not to kill them, but to achieve success. Yeah. They just played in Brazil one week ago. It, yeah, again, I mean, yeah. It I mean was the, the lead guy in Crawford, mm -hmm. now Ralph is he's 76, yeah. and uh, they, are, they ride their, their bicycles, and uh, they go <laughs> skiing, so they're in really good shape. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, they're definitely an inspiration for all of us in terms of like uh, trying yeah. to uh, to move forward and uh, keep keep going. Great. Yeah. Craft work, Nick Cave, you're a lucky guy. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, no metrics, not uh, not sale ticket, no. But um, I saw the followers, uh, viewers, and for me, it's more important. Uh, for example, in, in Instagram, uh, which people follow the artist? No, mm -hmm. ten people. Okay, uh, from Argentinian people, but they are a creator, a manager, a band, a journalist. Uh, Okay, maybe, maybe can, it's possible to, to sell ticket because they are working with us to, to promote uh, this band, no? Uh, more than a uh, thousand of uh, people, but uh, nobody follow, no? It's clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure, okay. So um, we have 10 minutes, and uh, I'm going to open for questions if you want to ask something, the audience. Um, I cannot see you, up. but. Can, can they put the lights up? So. Uh, yeah, can you? Is anybody? <laughs> yeah, this light is blinding us, but. Uh, anyone, should I ask? Please introduce yourself and make your question, please. Is that? Yeah, it's yes. Hi, my name is Wolf. I'm actually a musician. Um, I'm a local. Um, you guys talk about uh, internalization, but for uh, bands that are quite settled in their own place, did you ever actually bet for new bands? Uh, in my case, for example, um, I'm in a project that we sing in English. The, the singer is kind of native, and it's quite hard to create a big fan base here because Spanish is stronger and we think about like going out and looking for gigs outside which will be more they tell us no you guys should go to Berlin or should go to London and but we find that it's hard to access to these markets just because we are not strong here so it's kind of a mm. vicious cycle no? and wondering like promoters out there I mean like you guys you ever bet for bands like don't have big numbers in their local scene? Like, do you follow your heart or your taste? Yeah, uh, especially in Sao Paulo, which is a, a music conference like uh, Primavera Pro and Big Sound, we work with a lot of new bands. Actually, we work only with new, very, 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 very new bands. But they have uh, some, in, in my case, they need to be ready to go abroad. Like, it means um, they have like a, a team or a, a, some kind of structure in their own country that can support them to go abroad. Um, for instance, um, I saw many Brazilian artists going to South by Southwest, like paying to play there and because it, it, it's expensive, they go by themselves, only the artist. And then they go, they play for four people and go mm. home. It, it doesn't work because you need to have a team with you to do all the um, networking meetings and promote you know, your uh, project there. So. Uh, that's what we mean, like, when you are strong in your city, it's possible that you have this structure and some uh, money, maybe, to invest in other countries. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I agree. I think it's also important to um, be, invest in potentially um, getting team members on board from those territories. Say, um, maybe you get a radio plugger on board, um, a digital marketing team, um, uh, maybe PR. It's, it's, it's really important to um, 
it's going to cost money, basically, if, if, if yeah. there's... I mean, everything is going to cost money to kind of export from your country, but it, it's... Um, if you have at least maybe people championing, champion, championing mm -hmm. you um, from the territory that you want to, you know, export to, that you think your music would suit, um, it, it, it really helps tenfold, you know, because th then you can kind of go to go to a, a conference or a showcase festival and, and those local people can, can vouch for you and, and the people who are programming that, that festival can then see, oh, well, they've got this person on board, this person on board, cool, okay, we'll give them a shot. And um, it might not, not necessarily mean, I mean, Dom and I, who's in the audience, who, we program Big Sound together, um, if we saw an international artist that, uh, that had some kind of momentum in regards to team locally, we would be kind of, we would be more inclined to go, hey, like, we love this music, let's give it a shot. Um, but yeah, I do agree, mm -hmm. it's also very important when you go to those places to have someone um, to be doing all the industry blah, blah for you so you can focus on performing and um, being an artist and, and, and having your, and putting your best foot forward when it comes to doing what you love and doing what you do. So then they can go on and sell you to other people in order to expand the team further. Yeah, and also try to use the programs and um, that help you to go abroad from your country. I know that in Catalonia you have some. They've been to, to Sao Paulo. And for Canada and Australia, they send a lot of artists to in São Paulo to Brazil, <coughs> also. But and they are new artists. But when um, they open calls in their own country, country to see what bands want to go uh, to Brazil, to in São Paulo, and then we choose uh, the names that we think. Uh, can work better in Brazil. And we, when we choose, we don't choose only because of the talent or the project or because we like it mm -hmm. and we are going to bet on, on that band. We always see the label or the team or the management uh, office, who is behind this band, who is going to come to Brazil to uh, make business also, because a conference like that is about that. Also, it's about a lot of things, but it's about that. And when you invest in a band to go abroad, you need to have some results. You need to do the follow-up after, right? Yep. Uh, any other question? Right Last here. one? In the back. Hello. Here. Oh, yeah. oh hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Julieta. Uh, I'm from Argentina, and I'm happy to say that Niceto is fantastic. <laughs> um, I guess my question is more for Elliot and Ruby. Um, so Spanish-speaking music, of course, has been like developing and increasing so much in the past decades, as well as immigration. Uh, I would say probably the last 20 years, uh, whole Latin America has been expanding uh, and moving to Europe and North America and all that. So my question is, uh, when Spanish-speaking artists do concerts and play on shows and festivals in North America, even in Australia, I mean, it, there's so many Argentinians in Australia, it's ridiculous, uh, and in Europe, <laughs> do you think that they are actually breaking into those markets, or is it just the immigration that is now living there that goes and see them because they are still listening to that music? Did I explain myself? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, that's a very good point. Are you just playing to the converted? Um, I, th I think that um, it certainly it certainly starts that way, but but there there it, it can expand, and I, I think that um, if you look at um, some of the K-pop artists, to use that example, that um, mm. it, it definitely went beyond that, and it, it, so it wasn't just um, it wasn't just um, an Asian artist seeing Asian artists, uh, Asian population seeing Asian artists, but it was it was um, it was definitely a, a wider audience. So I, I think it can expand. Um, whether they understand what you're talking about, what you're singing about, I'm not sure if, if that's the case. But hopefully, 
um, the, if the performance is strong enough, um, that, um, that, that can translate. Um, so I think that um, it, it's, it's, it's a very good point. Although there's probably like, in, like in Los Angeles, for example, or in California, the, the Spanish speaking population, as they came to realize is so strong there, that when I, when I first got there, um, many of the artists from, uh, like the Mexican artists are, are so popular there. And um, that is like such a, um, a big scene that, um, and right now there's like um, some of the um, Grupo Ferme and um, a couple of these other groups from, from Mexico are just like so huge. In fact, they were a couple of the headliners at Coachella too and are now selling out stadiums. So um, there, there is a huge population, uh, Spanish speaking. I'm not sure Canada is, um, is always a, big, a bit of a question mark, especially like in, uh, like in a city like Toronto, how many people do speak Spanish there? There is some, but not as many as in California. Mm -hmm. um, I, <clears throat> I think um, specifically with Australian audiences, we're very open-minded to kind of all spectrums of language and music. And um, it's, it's, as Elliot was saying, it's, it's if you perform and you're kind of passionate um, audience will, audiences will follow. We have um, an artist called Gordon Koang, and um, he's from Africa, but he, and he sings only, uh, he doesn't sing in English at all, but he sells out shows in Australia throughout um, because he's just so amazing to watch and his story is so cool. And so it's, it's, um, it's definitely possible. And as you say, there's so many Argentinians in Australia and, and um, Australia in general is, um, not as multicultural as some, somewhere, mm. say, in Europe, but we, we do have quite a, um, a spectrum of humans over there, and it's amazing. So um, if you find your niche, it's, it's definitely something that, um, once you find your niche in Australia, that we're very loyal and we'll never let you go kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it, yeah it's, it's possible. It's entirely possible. Great, great. Do we have time? No? Okay, we are done then. So uh, just one minute for last uh, tips and considerations. And so, Diana. Um, try, try. <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, I think it's, it's difficult. It's difficult uh, to go abroad, but uh, we are working on it for the last 25 years, and we are opening our doors for a lot of emergent artists, and, and you can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, my last tip is um, the artist-to-artist -artist relationship is so powerful, and if you are able to kind of make connections with artists in the territory you want to travel, it's... Um, just even for friendship, um, mm -hmm. that's kind of where you should start first, I think. Um, and then they can kind of guide you in, in ways that, that not many other people can because they share the exact same experience as you. And vice versa, you know, they, they, you can then kind of take them around your country and, and um, be able to give them advice on people who to, who to work with. So I, I think, yeah, first, first step is artist-to-artist -artist connection. Good. Yeah, Ella? and um, uh, uh, Fab, thank you for the nice questions today and for uh, mm -hmm. organizing this. Um, mm -hmm. It was, it was um, no uh, really fun doing this with you, and you were so Good. comprehensive with your questions, so thank you. And um, I guess I want to mention, yesterday when the Sparks brothers were here and they were talking about their career, it was very inspirational. And I did a tour with Sparks after the movie came out, Annette, and after the Sparks Brother movie came out. And those guys were, they put on 26 records. And some of the records came out, and nobody cared about them at all. And um, they never let it stop them from moving forward. And there were mm. times when, like, they would go to a city and there would be like 200 tickets. That's all they could sell. And they, and they people, the critics in London were, savage in terms of the way they responded to the records and saying it's, it's a terrible record. And they 
never stopped. And they, they, unlike the Oasis brothers, they didn't hate each other. Like they just, they just realized that music was more important and they kept trying to go forward and making new records, coming up with new ideas. And eventually the world sort of changed for them and they had success. And um, the French movie came out uh, with Annette and it was a big success. And now uh, they're touring around the world and things are much better for them. But the point is that um, you have to kind of do it for yourself and not worry so much about what's going on with the rest of the world and always like get up in the morning and um, <laughs> make more music mm -hmm. and try to come up with new ideas and not, um, and then just hopefully uh, you'll achieve some success eventually. Yeah. Thank you all. It was amazing to talk to you. I just would like to say just one last thought about um, internationalization. <laughs> <laughs> so difficult to say this word in English. Um, it could also be a tool of life saving for immigrants and refugees. So I think everyone should think about that and embrace immigrants and refugees <clears throat> artists in your own con countries. We work with some Palestinian uh, artists or African artists mm. or Latin American artists from, from Venezuela, Bolivia, in Brazil, that they are um, politics, refugees, or, or um, they are running from starvation or things like that. And, and they go to Brazil, and they are amazing artists. So art and music is also um, a way to save their lives and to build a new life for them in another country. So this is not only about industry. It's about humanity also. And we need to think uh, that we are only one race in the whole world, the, the human race, and one, one planet. So we need to collaborate in that sense, too. I would like to thank you so much, Primavera Pro, for the invitation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for you to come. She's so smart. And I, <laughs> I hope to see you all in Sin São Paulo in May next year, OK? SinSãoPaulo.com, we are going to have more information soon. Thank you. Thank you. Non-fungible.